right now, Lisa Salters, uh, E60 Monday Night Football for Father's Day. Uh, an amazing piece. I got to see the preview of this, and it is a uh, piece on New Eagles wide receiver Marquise Goodwin and his personal journey in a Father's Day special that will air uh, this Sunday at noon on ESPN. And if you don't know Marquise Goodwin, he was come, he came over in a trade, got a tremendous story. Uh, by the way, he won a Super Bowl. He is also an Olympian. And now he's trying to uh, make the Eagles roster. We'll uh, dive a little deeper into Lisa Salters, who uh, reported on this as she joins us now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline on this Friday. Welcome, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? We're hanging in there as well as we all can, I guess, during these times. But uh, this piece should uh, be a nice uh, thing for at least the local, uh, not not only the locals, everybody, uh, but Marquise Goodwin, who we don't know all that well, obviously traded to the Eagles here. And this uh, journey that you kind of followed him on uh, for this Father's Day edition. Now, uh, kind of take us through um, what kind of drew you to Marquise Goodwin in this story. Uh, well, I first met Marquise back in 2014 um, when he was a rookie with the Bills. And um, back then I did a story on him because his, uh, you know, his sole uh, mission in life back then was to, you know, make enough money in the NFL to buy a house for his sister, his younger sister, who uh, has cerebral palsy and has, uh, has uh, never been able to walk. And he wanted to be able to build a, a wheelchair and a handicap accessible home for his little sister. And, um, you know, he did that in 2018. Uh, once he got, uh, a, a big contract with the, with the 49ers. Uh, so I've known him since then. And I've known just kind of what kind of a guy he is, um, family guy all the way. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't really know about his desire to be a father back then. I mean, it was 2014. He was, you know, in his early twenties. Um, but, since then, I mean, we all remember the game in 2017 where he scores the touchdown, he breaks down, and we find out after the game that uh, he and his wife, Morgan, had just had a, um, you know, had just uh, delivered um, a stillborn son, and he played in the game uh, in a tribute to his, to his son. And um, I, I think we kind of uh, reconnected then, uh, to, to think of a family going through that kind of, um, tragedy is, 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 uh, unimaginable. Uh, but then to go through it again, which the Goodwins did just the following year, um, was just unthinkable, uh, unspeakable even. And, um, you know, we reached out to see if they would be willing to, you know, share their story with us. Uh, and, uh, and they were, uh, for many reasons. One, um, because they were so determined that, that those losses were not going to define them, that they were going to ultimately reach their goal, goal of having a family. Uh, and two, because they wanted to, uh, put themselves out there to, for others who are going through, uh, this, who have experienced this kind of loss. They wanted, uh, to, to let them know that they're not alone. Um, tragedies like that tend to break up families and couples. Uh, the good ones were not going to allow that to happen. And they wanted to, you know, they wanted to put themselves out there for others to see that you can persevere. You can survive, uh, the tragedy. You can survive the pain. You can move forward and you can achieve your dreams. Uh, it's a powerful story. And if it can, uh, you know, it continues with the fact that, you know, we met his, uh, wife when they were in college. They're both runners. Mm-hmm. You've got these two tremendous athletes, and I guess you feel mm-hmm. uh, as athletes, you're like invincible, and then this happens. Yeah. You wonder how he, you know, persevered from that, and then uh, finally trying again, they, you know, they did end up having what they described as kind of their rainbow baby. Right. Uh, so when we interviewed them last uh, summer, they did not know that they, they were not expecting yet. Um, so at that time, they had already gone through, um, they had all already lost three children. They lost uh, baby Goodwin in 2017, and they lost twins in 2018. And, you know, my question to them last summer is, why keep trying? Like, you can, 
you can adopt, you can have a surrogate carry the child. Um, there were some medical issues that were the problem um, in, in all of both losses. And uh, so, you know, why are you putting your, yourselves through this agony and this pain? There, there are other ways to start a family. Uh, but they were, they were determined. Um, and, uh, you know, Marquise was going to kind of let, kind of let this be uh, Morgan's decision. And he said, however she wants to start our family, I will, I will agree with Morgan was adamant that she wanted to try one more time um, to uh, carry a child to term. And, uh, you know, a couple months after we interviewed them in July, uh, and it was a very emotional interview. I mean, they're talking about not one, but uh, two, you know, not one, but two, but the, the stillborn births of three children, uh, baby Goodwin in 2017 and the twins in 2018. Um, so it was a very emotionally draining um, four or five hours that we spent with them. Um, we find out a couple months after that, that they were uh, pregnant again. And, you know, you're just kind of waiting. I was just so nervous for them, but they were not, they were not going to let themselves be ruled by, you know, the past or fear of what could happen. They were confident. And you'll see once you get to know Marquise, now that he's with, uh, with the Eagles, he's just a happy guy. He's, he's always optimistic. He's always upbeat. Morgan is the same way. Um, and they were determined and, uh, I was happy for them. And, you know, once they, as they got further and further along in the, pre- in the pregnancy, I was, I had a couple of games in, uh, in San Francisco this past, uh, this past season, the 2019, 2020 season. And every time I'd see them, I'd see Morgan, you know, how's, how's it going? How's, you know, how are you doing? You're almost afraid to ask. Um, and they were like, great. It's going great. She's going great. She just was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, once they reached the point where the pregnancy was viable, you kind of breathe. They're like, oh, okay, they did it. They did it. And, you know, they ended up going to term and they have a beautiful baby girl now. What was most impactful to you when learning about this journey? Was there something that stood out to you most, something that you will never forget? Um, I think what stood out to me was their desire to, to just be um, out there and, you know, the good and the bad. They're very social and very, um, you know, 21st century social media couple, which me as, you know, an old person, I, you know, I don't, I said to them, I don't get that. Like, why do you put everything you guys do on social media? Um, Because they said they wanted to be, you know, we want to be, you know, a positive role model, African-American couple for people. We want people to see us happy in love, that this is what, uh, you know, a, a good family looks like. And so we will put out there, we, yes, we put out there when we're expecting and we put out there, you know, on social media when we lost our child too. And th- they said, we don't want to just put the good, the good out there. We want everyone to see all, all of us. And through this bad, through this pain, there are so many other families out there who have gone through the same thing. And when they were talking to me about it, it's true. Like you see, you see a couple, you know, they're expecting. And then the next thing they're, they're not pregnant anymore. And you're thinking, Oh gosh, do I ask what happened? Uh, You know, no one wants to talk about it. Uh, So they just wanted to, you know, be uh, some kind of hope for other people who have gone through this, that you can rise above, you can find happiness again. Lisa Salter is our guest here, ESPN's Monday Night Football. E60 is this Sunday at noon. It's a powerful story on new Eagles wide receiver uh, Marquise Goodwin. So uh, check that out this Father's Day. It's a uh, very emotional story, but uh, as she said, you'll uh, learn a lot about Marquise and his family, who uh, obviously is now a member of the Eagles. But uh, as, as it is described on your bio here, Lisa, a versatile and accomplished reporter. I mean, you've been a part of the NBA, the NFL, et cetera, you got to be wondering what is going on with the state of sports right now in your mind. I mean, how uh, we're here in, you know, the Philly area, and we're just seeing eight Phillies testing positive, the uh, Mm -hmm. Tampa Bay Lightning shutting down things. I mean, uh, where uh, is is the mindset on the sports world right now? Well, I mean, I think everyone is looking towards the NBA, and, you know, the NBA says they're coming back. Um, and everyone is waiting to see if that happens. I think a lot will happen 
uh, after that, if the NBA is able to successfully come back, uh, I think you might start seeing the other sports come back as well. But um, for me right now, uh, my, my, uh, my priority has been homeschooling my yeah. seven year old. So, um, you know, I miss sports, but uh, I, I have been busy. I will have to. I do have to say, I've been busy. Being the the yes, uh, homeschooling seems to be a challenge for everybody uh, oh, at goodness. this stage. That you probably never figured how difficult it would be just to get someone no. to sit and read everything, right? Oh, we should we should pay teachers way more. <laughs> way more. <laughs> Uh, obviously, check this out, everybody. Lisa Salter's with us here, and uh, it's called After the Storm, produced uh, by ESPN's E60, and it is a uh, Sunday at noon, and she was kind enough to kind of uh, give us a little overview uh, of what you will find out about. New Eagles wide receiver Marquise Goodwin and his wife Megan. They will share their personal journey uh, Morgan. on this fun. Morgan. Excuse, Morgan, excuse me. Morgan. Morgan yep. on, uh, you'll, on meet, you'll meet them soon enough. You'll love them, too. Yeah. Hopefully we don't meet it next time. It's not on Zoom. Uh, hopefully we get a chance to see yeah. him in person. Yeah, get get out to practice or something. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Lisa, we appreciate the uh, time and we look forward to this piece, uh, E60, this Sunday at noon. Thank you so much. All right, take care. All right, Lisa Salters, everybody here on the Sports Bash. What a story! What a chilling story! And uh, we appreciate her. And uh, that is this Sunday at noon, ESPN's E60. Uh, with Lisa Salter's reporting. We had the Roy Halladay E60 a couple of weeks ago, and now we get to learn a little bit more about Eagles wide receiver Marquise Goodwin. We appreciate her jumping on board.